Hi everyone! In today's video I got hands onto a pretty dirty but not that much beaten Olympus OM-2N. It is a classic 35mm SLR camera and was introduced in the 1970s. There it was a very popular camera or camera line because of its compact size and high build quality. This one comes with a 50mm f1.4 lens. The OM-2N is for today's standards still a great camera because of its advanced metering systems, fast shutter speeds and rugged build quality. In this video I will go through my cleaning and adjusting process to make the camera usable again. As I already said, the camera seems to be in good working condition, which is often the case with more modern electrical metering and exposure control systems like here in the OM-2N. So, in terms of CLA, there is a lot of cleaning, no lubrication and a little bit of adjusting or replacing of the light ceilings necessary. Let's get into it. At first I get all my stuff. These are cotton sticks and some cleaning clothes and some isopropanol. Later on I will also use some toothpicks. At first I have to get rid of the leather belt. This one is also very sticky and it's hindering me on working on the camera. So, bye bye you. Now for cleaning, I use one of these clothes and at first I thought it's a good idea to to wipe, swipe, wipe, clean with a with a cotton stick, but it's easier to just use the hand at first. This hot shoe is very wobbly, so this one has to get off, and below there is ugh, nasty stuff. Some white spots, maybe fungus. Well, I will clean this later. Now the cleaning itself is not that complicated. Just rub and clean and swipe and push and press and you know. So I will fasten the video a little bit so that you can see what I'm doing, but not by showing you every detail in one by one. Also get into the corners. And for the, for the stuff which is hard to dissolve, which is very sticky, I use the isopropanol to dissolve it a little bit or soften it a little bit. The toothpick is strong enough to get to scratch off the dirt in the corners and in the angles and in the narrow areas, but it does not scratch the metal or the, the top cover itself. Therefore, it's a very convenient tool. After I have finished my cleaning work on the outside, I go into the inside of the camera. So here's the film chamber and you can see in the gaps above and below the light ceilings, which are some, uh, some foam material and after the years they dissolve and get very sticky and porous, they have to be refreshed. Also you see also some of the white spots, which maybe lead to other problems later. But now I start with removing the the back door and cleaning this one. The process is the same as before. Get some cotton stick and some isopropanol and then clean and rub and get it off. Before I start working on the film chamber, I put some paper sheet above the shutter to prevent any of these little light sealing parts which will fall out to get into the shutter. If you have some of this inside the shutter and it gets into the mechanism, you will definitely get some problems. So after this is done, I use a toothpick and a very fine cotton stick and just scratch everything out and then with isopropanol remove the more resistant pieces. Here you can see a very big chunk.
And when everything is done, the result looks like this. You have a lot of these little pieces and sticky stuff and everything is very dirty. So it's good that it's not inside the camera anymore. So the next step for the cleaning process will be replacing of the light ceilings we just removed. Therefore you need some new tools. Of course you need some sharp cutting blade. You need some cutting mat, the green one in the background. And you need a ruler. And of course you need your material. This light ceiling foam has an adhesive back, which makes it easy to place and fix it in the place you need the light ceiling later on. The process is again very straightforward. You have to measure approximately the length and the width of the material and then just cut the pieces out and stick them in place. Especially for the gaps above and below the light chamber, it's very important that your adhesive side sticks to the back side and not to the walls of the gaps. Otherwise it may occur that your door will stick to the adhesive and not open properly. If it's done correct, you will notice that your door pops up with much more tension than before because of your new light ceiling. Take attention to the lever on the upper side, the silver pin. This one is used to reset your film counter when opening the door. It has to be spared and to move freely, like you can see here. And that's it so far for replacing the light ceilings of this camera. The last step is now to clean the leatherette. Therefore I use some vehicle cockpit spray and a toothbrush. Just put some decent amount of foam on each side of the leatherette here of the back plate and then with a the toothbrush start scrubbing in every edge and every wrinkle. This process will sprinkle a little bit, therefore uh, I constantly keep cleaning with some paper tissue all around. But the effort is worth it because I get in each and every corner and later on the leatherette is very shiny and clean again. And here we are in the end of my small CLA process. The camera is now clean again and in a state where I want to put it into my face. The light ceilings are replaced, the function is tested, so there speaks nothing against putting some film inside. And with these last images I will let you go to the next YouTube video. I hope you liked it and maybe learned something about how to clean a used camera and maybe you're not afraid to try it by yourself sometime. That's it for now. I hope I will see you later in another video of mine. Bye!